Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our session. We are so excited to be in Paris, to be at KubeCon, and uh, to be speakers today. Uh, personally, me, it's my first time to be a speaker in such a big conference like KubeCon. That's why I'm slightly nervous, but <laughs> still excited. And today, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And today we will conduct a talk about the cell-based architecture or the CBA. And we will uh, first talk about what, it's, what is the CBA. Then uh, we will share with you what were our business drivers uh, for using the cell-based architecture. Then we will move forward with the case study where we will present our solution architecture there. And in the end, we will share with you uh, learnings which we uh, got uh, by uh, working with the CBA. Before we proceed, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Rosti, and I'm a cloud solutions architect from uh, Booking.com, mostly uh, working with AWS and Kubernetes. Uh, the thing is, uh, I think in the speaker agenda, I mentioned as nine AWS certified, but I've become the full AWS certified recently. So <laughs> I just uh, like uh, cloud and cloud native. And now, uh, Shweta, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you, Rosti. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing? Great. So as Rosti said, we both are solution architect from Booking.com. So first question I would like to ask, how many of you lo uh, love to travel? A raise of hand. Almost many of us. That's great. Uh, because Booking.com, if you know, uh, we have a mission to make it easier for everyone to experience the world. And with that mission in mind, uh, we are very selective about our technologies and um, working towards it. And of course, open source technologies have a bigger role to play in that. Uh, apart from that, I'm um, more interested in security talks. So that's why this talk as well around security. Um, but we can catch up later on that if anything you want to introduce to us. With that said, let's dive into our topic for today. This is about cell-based architecture. Cell-based architecture um, is essentially a decentralized architecture reference, which was first introduced by WSO2, open source group. And since then, it uh, really picked up well and adopted by us as well. Before we see the details of cell-based architecture, I would like to uh, delve on the point that why cell-based architecture? We, at some point between 2014 to 2020, we said that monoliths are not good. They are centralized, though they are good in some sense. But um, we want to move away from monoliths. And that's where we came more towards microservices and containers and container orchestration world. But when we moved away, we moved away from one problem but we moved away towards many such smaller problems. So how do we deal with this? And to complicate the problem, we have more and more cloud services, everything as code, and many more things. In order to handle that, there were certain architecture patterns which were introduced, like service mesh architecture, which deals with its, it, it doesn't deal with the system architecture as a whole, but service mesh deals with how services talk to each other, how such granular services can streamline and can talk to each other. Um, this talk is not about that, but if you're interested in knowing it, this is the barcode where you can go through a detailed case study about it. And we also introduced domain-driven uh, architectures, where it says that how do you design your products, your services around your domain, your specific need, and also, we, this paper introduced the cell-based architecture, which is the uh, talk for today. Cell-based architecture, in a way, also um, makes the do domain-driven design a subset of it. And we'll talk about it. Now let's look into the cell, because the entire premises around it is that what is cell-based architecture. And the smallest unit, like any biological cell, 
we say that biological cell is a, a smallest unit which contains, for example, in this case, it contains some chromosomal, uh, chromosomal DNA, it contains membrane, it contains its outer layer which protects itself and then a layer which makes it communicate with the outer world. Now, what is peculiar about this uh, cell is that it is, it can independent, independently create, produce, consume its own metabolism and can secure its local structure. So what it is, it is a self-contained unit on its own. It is one unit, it is always considered as one unit. It is independently scalable and it is isolated. So it can maintain its own state without necessarily sharing it with the outer world. Now with that said, we relate it to software uh, cell or the architectural cell where this cell can be comprised of many components within it. Um, now those components can vary. It may be just one service, microservice, or it, there can be many microservices around with all that is needed to make the, your workload complete. So that's what makes it cell. And cells also uh, contain its boundary, like it's shown in the outer layer of it, the cell boundary or the interfacing layer, the way it talks to the outside world. But with this cell also, we like it to be treated as self-contained, one unit, independently scalable, and having its local state and control. With that introduced, let's see what can go inside a cell, in a software architecture cell. Like um, in, in biological cells, cells can be different. For example, a plant can have a different cell contents or body. And similarly, um, a human cell or animal cell, those can be different. So cells can be different for different uh, people, for different uh, enterprises. So a, typically, a cell component can be your compute with services. It can be data storage, which is required to maintain the state of your services. It can also contain its configuration and, of course, security infrastructure around it. How do you segregate and separate out the internals from the outside of it? And it's um, essential lifecycle management, like logging and monitoring, DevOps, and infrastructure as code. Now, the beauty of cell comes out when you uh, see it from different perspectives. Now, for our experience, that uh, we have seen that it can be a technology-driven cell. Those teams who are more cloud and cloud native and like to experiment a lot with the newer uh, features of it, they like to see cells as more technology-driven cells, where, for example, one of your team has a cell with more serverless architecture, serverless components, and it um, may be written in Java or may be written in Go. Or other team, it might, they might like Python, and they like to do more predictable workloads, which is like Kubernetes kind of clusters and things running, so they can have their own state. And that's where it gives them the ways and means to do it in their own way. You can have domain-driven definition to these cells. For example, within um, uh, Booking as well, we have both these flavors. There are teams who are using it for technological uh, ways and means more, and there are teams which are using it for domain-driven, where product teams like to have their products categorized as one cell, and that's how they like to develop and scale their work. There is one more thing about uh, cell sizing, that one cell can be just one service, one cell can be many services inside it. A cell can have one instance of it, but in more cloud-native sense, it can have same cell can have multiple instances of it, and we'll see it in the case study as well. Now, another important uh, part of cell is the cell communication. That, that is very important, because that's what keeps it not just the internals of one cell, but it keeps it isolated from the outer world as well. And that's where we say that you need to have your central gateway, which, is, um, which keeps it disconnected from the outer world, and it should have a strict API contract, where each cell exposes very minimal to the outside world, and it sticks to those API contracts. 
And on other hand, you can also have your local cell gateways where uh, they make sure that if there are any internal communications have to happen, which is uh, may not be exposed outside, that can be taken care. So it's a kind of local control plane versus the global control plane, which is essentially for the networking. And there is another pattern which we uh, are using is that if you have cells which need not go outside to the world, need not be exposed outside, then you can also expose it through the uh, event and messaging systems and through the internal gateways. So that's another pattern to it. I'll now request Rosti to walk us through that with this cell-based architecture, what were our specific business drivers which made us adopt it? Thank you, Shweta. So before we move forward to the use case, I'd like to share with you what were our business drivers behind the cell-based architecture. First of all, uh, as all sort of mentioned before, uh, within the past uh, five to ten years, uh, um, a lot of companies moved from the uh, monolithic applications to microservices. It was our journey also. So after migrating our services and uh, establishing the microservice uh, ecosystem, we faced a bunch of challenges. And uh, the major challenges for us were, first of all, as you can imagine for sure, it was the dependency hell. In Booking, as you can imagine, we have a quite uh, big number of services. It's really quite big. That's why it's uh, a complicated topic how to uh, control and track all the dependencies we have and also ensure that like, we communicating from one service to another properly. A uh, really complicated topic. Um, so another challenge for us was we also moved from uh, single tenancy to multi tenancy model, and it brought just extra challenges because, as you can imagine, before that, like we had to uh, deal with a single contract, but now we, uh, we were needed to deal with multiple contracts, like one tenant can have uh, one set of requirements, uh, another tenant can have another set of requirements, and we need to do something <laughs> in order to um, satisfy those requirements uh, and try to do something. It was, it's a complicated topic again, but it just brought more challenges uh, on top of our dependency hell. And even more, uh, another major challenge was security. Because, uh, again, uh, security is a quite important uh, topic in Booking.com, and we need to comply with multiple internal and external security standards. And just by seeing this picture of the dependency hell, you can imagine, I'm, I'm just looking into it right now, uh, I'm trying to imagine, okay, I need to build some security boundaries somewhere, but where should I put it? And moreover, uh, okay, it's complicated, it's, okay, it's feasible, we could shape something, we could just draw basically a shape in this picture, but then the question is, okay, but what if I need to comply with more than one uh, security standard? It becomes really much more complicated because, uh, you see, it's really a really complicated topic, but uh, we, we, uh, we need to deal with that anyway. So that's why we, this is where we started. We realized that the cell-based architecture can be a um, good fit to address those challenges. And on top of that, we had more drivers, which were, first of all, we, what we wanted to do, because in, we also uh, engage our product teams to, product teams to uh, leverage uh, cloud native and open source technologies and be more flexible in choosing of a particular technology which is a good fit to a particular use case and we wanted to incorporate it somehow into our let's say okay okay design uh, then then we wanted to again to have this capability of being able to comply with more than one security and compliance standards in parallel and also provided somehow by design. 
and uh, for sure we would like to address some uh, quality attributes again by design and all this uh, all those things you see are about how we could help our develop uh, our product teams to uh, be more focused on a business uh, logic and on development uh, stuff instead of uh, dealing uh, a lot of things with the infrastructure itself. So that's why after trying the CBA we realized that by with CBA how we can address all those needs. You can see the benefits listed here. So first of all we um, introduced two dimensions for our cell. The first dimension is, uh, which for sure is domain or subdomain driven design, where basically we could just uh, introduce a cell for a specific, let's say, subdomain, and this is where we could just uh, put the services inside the cell, which represent the subdomain, and uh, it provides us a good balance with the product teams because until the cell contract is not broken, then actually it's not so important what is running inside, and that's why developers uh, from product teams can use different technologies. They can experiment with cloud native, with open source, bring uh, more tools which they like to test, just to put it inside the cell, and it would be fine. Also, another dimension is a security-driven design which uh, is our way to address that if, for instance, yeah, the bottom line is to address for sure security and compliance, where basically a cell represents just a particular standard or set of standards, and you see by having this boundary and by having that cell gateway and internal gateways, which Fred mentioned, this is our way to enforce those controls and uh, have a guarantee that no one uh, breaks those uh, security boundaries and we are still compliant by uh, having multiple components, multiple services inside a cell. And uh, except, for sure, except the uh, security standard, also a cell can represent, for instance, a workload specific to a particular tenant. So this is how also way, not about the pure security requirements, but also about uh, particular tenant requirements. And another thing was scalability, because uh, what we also learned uh, is we can just scale our workloads just by creating uh, multiple cell instances. So that's why we could just like can spin up another cell instance of the same workload uh, to distribute the incoming traffic uh, between them, the only thing which is needed, and it will be present in <coughs> during the showcase uh, scenario is basically we just need uh, to have a routing layer on top just to incorporate new cells which have been created and distribute the incoming traffic among them. And now I hand it over to Shweta to present our use case architecture. Thank you, Rusty. Um, now time is to look into the uh, technical implementation. We'll double down or zoom into the one of the glimpse of how this implementation has been done for one of our domain. Um, this is the reference architecture for the payment uh, domain where it's not, I mean, I will go to the technical architecture of it, but how this represents is that you have policy cell uh, sorry, payment cell on the left mode side, which is the cell one labeled. And this cell is exposing its services and uh, it's through global gateway, which is going through this uh, secure traffic routing layer. And that's the only route where it, it is supposed to be exposing the services. The multiple set of these layers are showing that, that this being critical, service, this is, this is multi-instances ins, uh, of those cells which we are talking about. And it talks over secured TLS layer to the policy uh, management cell, which is the cell two. And policy management cell, though it is important, but not as critical as the payment cell. So it is uh, shown with a single layer here that how it 
it has its one instance, but then there are deployable means which make sure that if at all anything happens with this cell, then they bring up another cell quickly. And there are other uh, smaller cells as shown here, the th cell three, which is more to indicate the internal communications with your shared services or your other uh, cells which might be lying in the system. Now, what is, how does it look like inside? Now, if you look at this uh, payment cell, it has AZ1 cell instance, AZ2, AZ3. Now, this is again to isolate because this is regional. It can be cell instances can be many in this particular payment domain, but it cannot be exposed outside to the region. So that's where we have replication in um, AZ level. Each cell, if we go now inside that cell, each cell in this case, because this is to do with more predictable workload, we have um, Kubernetes service running there, and that's what uh, is used for the compute for various microservices. We have uh, uh, one thing to note in this is that you have routable and non-routable uh, subnets. The workload, the actual workload resides in the non-routable subnet where you have all the implementations and, and your key stuff lying there. And it talks to the outside world through this non-routable layer which is exposed outside. And there, is, there are a lot of uh, other security services, which is very difficult to show in one slide. But uh, in order to tell you, in nutshell, we have Spiffy for identities management. We use Vault uh, for the secrets and configuration. We use uh, Passport for uh, application-based uh, access control. And we have other guardrails like OPA and other things. So with all those security tightened inside, outside it is through transit gateway as is shown in this particular case. Um, if you're interested in knowing about more of Spiffy identities and how identity get managed, this is another uh, talk, which is PKI and certificate, certificate management, which you can refer to later. Uh, another cell to double down, because this cell is different from other cell, uh, uh, the, the one which I've shown previously, because this is more to do with the unpredictable workload. So we are, we are having serverless-based services there. For example, we are using Lambdas, we are using ECS Fargate, which makes the provisioning based on the need as it uh, arises. And this is a single instance what we are using. Um, again, from security perspective, it has similar security norms. And this is how this whole picture comes together, the block one and the block two. They go well together. Both are exposing through transit gateway. Uh, there's stuff outside to the world. Now, in this diagram, one thing I would like uh, your notice on that this entire thing, cell one, two, four, and five, all these four cells can go away and can come up. So these are independently deployable, except this networking layer, which is a thin layer on top of that, which is may not be in form of that cell. So that is where we put our all firewall security to the outside world. And also to mention this layer four and five, because they give you the essential deployment feature which you need with those cells, because cells need to be enhanced also. They have their own life cycle. Their features are getting uh, added, deleted day by day. So that's the layer which takes care of your uh, cell instances and their subservices, how they get deployed. At the same time, you have a layer uh, for exposing if any essential monitoring data you need to expose to the outside world. So that's how um, the whole payment and policy domains come together and work together, but there is much more to it than this. We have some learnings, um, and there cannot be a better person than Rosti, who's been hand-holding these teams in terms of uh, what can go wrong or if cell-based architecture is for you or not for you. So let's hear from him. Thank you, Shweta. Yes, so uh, what were our learnings after uh, working with the CBA? So first of all, we, uh, we ended up by setting an um, uh, architecture governance process where uh, we created a governance group of cloud, product, and AWS architects. 
and we uh, developed an internal standard regarding the CBA and engage our teams to uh, create if, if they think that uh, the CBA is a good fit uh, to them to create a proposal and share it with us so we can comment on that and advise them whether the CBA is a good choice for this particular use case and uh, check whether all the our internals are met there as well as for sure to engage more stakeholders if needed and to raise and address more more concerns. Uh, it's really better to have such a process because sometimes it was, in the beginning, it was a bit chaotic, let's say. Then, then uh, what, when actually you should consider CBA? So you uh, sh should consider the CBA if uh, your challenges are security and compliance, like our challenges. And if you are looking for reputability, where you need to uh, spin up uh, new versions of your applications and you need to experiment more and test something more, and so on and so forth, then uh, you can consider the CBA. Then, if your architecture looks like Again, like our architecture, if you have a lot of services which talk to each other uh, using different protocols, and if you have big trust boundaries, you should consider the ECBA also. And if you foresee in your future either big uh, refactoring of your microservices or you have, you, if you're planning a big migration to microservices, uh, if uh, you are also looking to how to improve your reliability and uh, if you foresee more granular trust requirements, trust requirements, uh, yes, uh, you uh, should consider the CBA. But uh, please remember, you should be careful with it and just assess it specifically to your company, to your technologies, to what exactly you are doing, because sometimes it can be just an overkill. That's it from us, and you can see our QR codes here. You can reach out to us in LinkedIn and uh, message us about your feedbacks or thoughts or comments there. Uh, thank you, and I okay. think we have... We have uh, time for questions, if any. I think there's a mic here if you can please come or maybe we can give this I think we have a special microphone yeah there is one hello hello we can hear you okay you can hear me good um, question about your cells and your your payment example when you talk to the data layer and you're doing because you're gonna have to partition your data unless you're having one dependency. So I'm curious how you've done that. So if you've got individual cells and you're saying the data belongs to a cell, that data then just belongs to that one cell and is not shared with other cells. So I'm just curious how you broke apart your data or partitioned your data and rooted to the right cell that owns that data. Yeah. So the question is that how do we um, partition and utilize data for our cells. Um, two things which I would like to mention, and Rosti, please add if you have more. One is that in, in this particular case, payment, because in some of our financial technology, business has picked up cell-based architecture. For them, security and compliance is very, very important. So yes, we have cell-based uh, DBs, where data is dedicated to those cells. And there is very minimal sharing between cell instances, because without that, you cannot uh, live. I mean, if at, at all any synchronization has to happen, that happens. Um, apart from that, in terms of security, because we are, the whole premises here we are talking about is security. So we have the whole uh, um, things taken care in terms of data encryptions and uh, data moving in transit should be well encrypted. That's why I was mentioning about all that PKI uh, infrastructure and all. 
but that's how it is being done. Anything you want um, to add? Yeah, also what you could do, you could just uh, create a special cell for data and just move your data there or database, whatever, and this is how you could address those needs also. The only thing is just for sure, just to uh, establish the communication properly and decide whether you need kind of some uh, some routing or logic between them in order to deal with partitions uh, and so on and so forth. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. It was uh, very fun. And uh, I've got a question about cross cell uh, incidents because if I understand correctly, cells mostly map one to one onto uh, teams. And if uh, the cells are polyglot cells, which m means that completely different text tags may be uh, used within the cells, uh, a incident that touches on multiple different cells might be difficult to resolve. Uh, does it backfire in any way, or is it actually simpler than, uh, than what I expect? I'm not sure I got your question correctly, Rusty. Can, uh, you, can you paraphrase it uh, for us? Uh, I'll try. Uh, if every cell has its own text stack, and there is an incident that touches multiple different cells, is it difficult to resolve that incidence because of the cell-based infra uh, or cell-based structure or not? Um, definitely there are incidents, but, um, and I get your point, uh, that when you have a common incident which touches upon uh, two, three cells, how do you really uh, diagnose that? But I am not able to recall any such common incident because that's where the cell design has been that you are able to resolve it um, concentrated into one cell. However, to answer it offline, maybe I would like to check with our uh, incident teams that if they have firefighted it and they might have some. Uh, in, pr in principle, yes, so we didn't have such an experience, but the thing is because you see the idea, the whole idea that uh, a cell represents like you're also uh, to uh, you're like uh, to reduce your blast radius and the idea is so if something happens it just happened within a single cell not within multiple cells and this is where we could either like usually the idea is you could just spin up another cell instance just uh, tear down the existing one maybe it helps but this is what could you at least you could try or uh, by following this all the monitoring tools just uh, deal with this incident so if uh, in in your uh, situation, if you see that multiple cells uh, become broken, uh, most likely you need just to read it uh, how your what you exactly you put into those cells because by design it shouldn't be in such a way when multiple cells are broken. For sure, it can happen, but in our scenario, usually our like uh, incidents were just tied to the single cell. But uh, as Shreta mentioned, yeah, we could reach out to our internal team. Yeah, uh, we to can see figure it out for you. To see yeah, if we had uh, such uh, incidents also. But okay. in general, that would be a symptom of uh, something being designed wrong with the cells themselves. Yes, quite possible. And I'm getting indication to uh, get it closed. We can discuss it offline. Thank you all. Thanks Thank for you. listening.